The <coughs> Government in the appeal the Queen on the application of Client Earth and the Secretary of State for the Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. Lord Carnworth will explain the decision of the Court. EU Directive 2008-50 sets limits for acceptable levels of certain air pollutants considered dangerous to human health, including nitrogen dioxide. The limits took effect in January 2010. The UK, like a number of other European countries, has failed to comply for a number of zones, including parts of London. Article 22 allowed for an application for an extension of the limits for five years, subject to certain conditions and the submission of detailed information about measures considered. The UK submitted applications for some zones, but not for those in which it did not feel able to comply within the extended period. It took the position that it was not bound to apply for an extension, but could, under Article 23, submit to the Commission air quality plans showing compliance as soon as possible, leaving the Commission to take such enforcement action as it thought fit. Client Earth, a cam campaigning group, brought these proceedings in 2011 to enforce the directive, and in particular to compel the UK to apply for an extension. In May 2013, the Supreme Court sought guidance from the Court of Justice on the duties of the Member State and the National Court under the directive. The Court responded in a judgment dated 14th November of last year. In the light of those answers, the Supreme Court, by a unanimous judgment given by me, orders that the government must prepare and consult on new air quality plans under Article 23.1 for submission to the European Commission no later than the 31st of January 2015. Although the European Court reformulated the first two questions in a way which leaves open the obligation of the state to apply for an extension under Article 22, that particular issue has been overtaken in practice by the expiry of the extended period at the beginning of this year. Furthermore, it is clear that failure to apply for a postponement far from strengthening the position of the state, reinforces its essential obligation to act urgently under Article 23.1 to remedy the danger to public health as soon as possible. The court is able, where necessary, to impose requirements no less onerous than those under Article 22 to secure effective compliance. The view of the lower courts that enforcement could be left to the commission is not tenable in the light of the European Court's judgment. The court judgment leaves no doubt as to the seriousness of the breach, which has been continuing for more than five years, nor as to the responsibility of the national court to secure compliance. Further, during those five years, the prospects of compliance have become worse. The most recent projections predict non-compliance in some zones even beyond 2030. The Secretary of State has accepted that new plans need to be prepared and is intending to prepare and consult on plans for submission to the Commission by the end of the year. Given the restrictions on government policy commitments during the current election period, the Secretary of State is unable to offer a binding undertaking. Accordingly, it is appropriate for there to be an order of the court to that effect. There will be provision for application to the administrative court if necessary to vary the time limit or for determination of other legal issues which may arise in the course of preparation of the new plans. Thank you. The court is now adjourned.